guys, welcome back to my Monday channel where I create gnomes and characters. Last year, I did a pilgrim gnome for Thanksgiving, and this year, y'all have been asking me if I would make an Indian gnome to go with him. So, without further ado, check out this little guy. His little hat's made with Nerf, Nerf bullets. His clothes are made with a chamois, got a little ponytail. If you want to know how to make him, stick around. i show you how. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. Okay, these are all the supplies that you're going to need. I'm going to list them in the description below. If you don't see them in the description below, you can always see them on my website at www.pattyjgood.com. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our 70 millimeter half ornament and we're just going to cut the tab off. Next, we're going to take our little Nerf bullets and we're just going to cut them in half. Now, if you don't have Nerf bullets, you can just take paper and roll it up. It'll work exactly the same, the same way. You just need a total of 12 pieces and they're about a one and a quarter inches in length. Next, we're going to take some embroidery floss and we're just going to start wrapping it around the bottom. You're going to wrap it around a few times and then we're going to come over and make an X to the opposite side. Roll it around for a little bit and then come back over and you're going to have an X in the middle and then just roll it around a couple of times and then glue it off in the back. And you're going to need to do this to all 12 of these. Okay, now we're going to attach them to our ornament. We're just going to start, go halfway around our ornament. Just kind of make take some time to make sure that they stand up straight. Try not to make them lean. Okay, now we're going to take a three by nine inch piece of faux fur and we're going to cut it in three equal pieces. And this is what's going to be the hair. And we're just going to start in the middle of our ornament and we're going to add our first piece. Glue it down. And then we're going to glue our other two pieces on each side of it. And just kind of pull it in there to where it blends in and you don't see any of the seam on the side. Or any of the backing on the side. Just kind of squeeze it up in there. And then once you get all this together and you comb it through, it'll be um, one solid piece. Just come down the side a little bit. And you will need to cut these into strips because it won't lay right if you don't. Okay, next what we're going to do is just going to glue the pieces together. So go ahead and um, turn it over and then just glue that strip together and the other two strips together as well. Okay, then we're just going to turn it over. We're going to add a rubber band at the top and we are going to braid this. And then we're just going to add a rubber band to the bottom. And then we're going to put some jute around them just to kind of finish them off. And I didn't show you in the video, but I trimmed off my ponytail a little bit shorter on the bottom. Okay, now we're going to start adding the feathers. Now you want to start with some longer feathers, and I got these at Hobby Lobby. And go ahead and put one in each one of those little holes facing backwards. And then we're going to come back in and we're going to add some little ones in the front just to kind of fill it in. And you can use any kind of feather or any length of feather you want to. Just make sure you get one in each one of those little holes. Next I'm going to take a chamois and I'm just going to cut it in half. So it ends up being 17 inches by 13 inches. And then I'm just going to stain it with some tea. Okay, now I'm going to take a headband that's one inch by five and a half inches, and I'm just going to attach it to the top. Now, just kind of barely go inside of that. You just want to make sure that more of it hangs out than goes inside of the ornament. Just glue it in. It's right at the edge. Okay, next I'm just going to um, add some feathers down the side. I'm just putting two little feathers together, a long one and a short one. I'm attaching a little 10 millimeter bead to them. And then I'm just going to attach them to the second to the back um, Nerf bullet. Now this is not a hard project. It's got a lot of steps, but it's pretty easy to do. Next 
I'm taking a damp chamois that's eight and three quarter by five and a half. I'm wrapping it around my noodle and just pinning it off and then let it dry. Now that it's dry, we're going to go ahead and attach it to our noodles. So just come down the front part and glue that part on and then wrap the other part over the front of that one and glue that down. Now this is going to be the front of his shirt, but his beard's going to cover up these seams. Okay, next we're just going to take a pair of scissors and we're going to cut quarter inch slits all the way around to kind of create some fringe and then just kind of ruffle it out with your fingers. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and cut his beard. We're going to cut it at two and a half by two and a half. Just mark it on your um, on the backing of your faux fur and we're just going to cut in a U shape all the way around there on the backing only, not through the fur, in a U shape. And then just clean the excess off. Okay, now we're just going to attach the beard right up to the edge of his, of his top. So right up to the edge of the top of that noodle. And then glue the bottom part down as well. Next, take your sticks and sharpen them. And then we're going to start adding weights. Now I'm using 5 16 inch um, nuts. And you can get these at the hardware store in a bag of 100. They're pretty inexpensive. We're going to use 8 weights per shoe. So you're going to put 2 together and glue them in the back. And that's what's going to hold our sticks up. Just make sure your stick stands up straight. And then we're going to add two to the front part. And you're going to need a lot of weight because his ponytail is pretty heavy. If you don't make his ponytail as long as that, you can use less weight, but it does make it Pull, it makes it lean, lean back if you don't. And this was just enough weight to get it to stand up straight. And you don't have to worry so much if you don't get them in there all the way because his, his pants leg is going to cover them up. Then you go ahead and add a couple more to the bottom of his shoe. And then we're going to add two more over the top part of the stick. Okay, then we're just going to go ahead and glue his ponytail on down. I just do the lower half only. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and build his um, shoes. We're going to go ahead and put some glue on the bottom and add the sole on there. Now, I've given you the SVG and the PDF files for both of these. And just go ahead and cut all the way around, little slits all the way around, and we're going to glue those up the side. And this will give it a nice finished edge. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and add the back of the shoe on there. Just center it in the center and just wrap that around and glue it on both sides. Okay, next we're going to attach the front part of the shoe and we're just going to add a little bit of glue down at the bottom of the shoe and attach that on there. And then just add a little bit of glue to the front part of the shoe and glue that down and then go ahead and pull your sides all the way down until they meet at the bottom, kind of stretch it and then glue those down. Now this is a Cricut brand faux suede and I'll give you the link for that below as well. And then go ahead and glue up underneath there and flatten those up. And those will be covered up here in a minute with the, with the trim. Now we're going to take the part that goes around the top part and we're going to cut little fringe strips all the way down it. Now you probably want to go down until you're about a quarter inch from the edge. And then go ahead and start gluing the top part of that shoe in first before we put that fringe on. And don't worry about it being perfect because his, his pant leg is going to cover up a lot of that. And then go ahead and attach your fringe. Just glue it in the back. And then don't pull real tight. Just come around to the front, kind of leaving it open a little bit at the top and glue it back in the back. Okay, and then we're just going to add a little trim around the bottom of the edge of the shoe and kind of pull it as you go, but don't pull too tight because you don't want to um, snap this. Just kind of lightly pull it and then trim off and glue it in, into the back. Okay, next we're going to kind of beef up the legs a little bit. We're going to come down two inches from the top, make a mark, and we're going to add some quilt batting. This is a two and a half inch, I mean two and a quarter inch by five inch strip. And we're just going to glue it all the way around there. Just make sure that you are below that line of the two inches. And then just keep wrapping around, but you want to make sure that you end in the back. And 
and then just trim any excess off and then do the same thing for the other leg. Next we're going to go ahead and make the pants and on the four and three quarter inch side you're going to go ahead and glue the edge down onto the shoe and you're going to glue it all the way around till you get to the other side and we're not going to completely close this in. We're going to seal it in just until it touches the other fabric and then glue it that in and then we're going to glue it up the side. Now we're going to leave this um, flap over the edge because that's going to be our fringe for the side of our pant and the fringe is going to go to the outside of the legs. So go ahead and fold that over leaving that flap that flap um, fabric open there and then we're just going to cut little slits in it to create the fringe. Now you need to make sure that your fabric is a little bit damp while you're doing this. When it dries it'll be pretty hard so just kind of make sure that you are working with a little bit of a damp fabric and this is a chamois. If you don't use a chamois then you can just you know you don't have to worry about that part but the chamois will dry hard so you want to make sure that um, your little fringe is how you want it. And then we're going to cut slits down to the batting area, just down to the batting area. And that's what we're going to attach it to the noodle up underneath the um, jacket. Okay, and then just go ahead and evenly space hit these legs, one on each side in the center, and just kind of line it up and then just make sure that, that fringe is up to the side. Okay, next we're going to do the other leg. Now we're going to do it opposite because we want to make sure that the fringe is facing outward. So we are going to do this opposite of the other ones. And again, make sure that your fabric is, is a little bit damp. Now if you aren't going to use a chamois, you can use any other kind of fabric you want to. But just make sure that if you use a fabric that frays, you will have to add um, a seam allowance for a hem. Just do it exactly the same way as the other one, just making sure that the fringe is facing outward. Okay, and then go ahead and put that leg up in there too, and then trim off any that you don't want hanging over on the edges. Then go ahead and pull your legs back out. We're going to go ahead and glue them in. And make sure that you pull all those little tabs back. And then here in a second, we're going to go ahead and glue those to the pool noodle itself. So just get them lined up. Make sure that they're not tucked under, underneath the leg. Just pull them back before you stick them in there. And then just go ahead and start gluing those in. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and make his hands and I'm just taking a hand mold and I'm taking the cause clay that I used um, in, a, in a video before, the one that will actually bend once you bake it. Go ahead and just go ahead and fill in the hand with the little, um, put little fingers in there and then go ahead and put a big wad of the um, clay in there to kind of spread it all out. If you start with the little pieces first and get it in there, it, the hand will turn out a lot better. And just kind of smooth it in there until you have until you can see your fingers and, and the shape of your hand. And then go ahead and pull it out and then just do the same thing with the other hand. Next, I'm going to make the arms and I'm going to cut them at two and a half inches in length. And I'm just taking some clay, the same clay, rolling it up in a ball and then just kind of rolling it up into like a little um, log. It's probably only going to be about maybe a quarter inch um, in diameter. Just make sure that your arms are going to be exactly the same length. And then we're going to run the wire up through them. And this is about a four and a half inch piece of wire. And just run it right through the center of that all the way through. And then we're going to attach the hand to it as well. Just kind of roll it out to smooth it out attach your hand and then you're going to you're going to blend the two together so just kind of take your finger and blend them together and then you're going to bake these at 275 degrees for 30 minutes now the only part that's going to bend is going to be the one that's in the wire the hand will not bend so go ahead and bend your fingers now if and um make sure that both of your thumbs are facing outward because i actually bent one the wrong way so i have two of the same side hand 
So we're going to make the arms. We're going to take a three and a quarter by three and a quarter piece of um, the chamois. Just fold it straight over the arm. Just make sure that your thumb is facing the opposite way of the, the fabric that's over laying over the side. Because we're going to put the fringe on it like we did on the pants. And we're going to do it facing outward. So just glue your arm in there. And then we're going to glue down the side of the arm too. And then we're going to glue the pieces of fabric together. And then just start cutting your slits just like you did on the pants. And then go ahead and kind of flare them open a little bit so that they are, when they dry, that they'll be a little bit more um, rough looking like that. And then do the other arm exactly like that one. Just make sure your thumbs are facing the opposite way of the fringe because I have two of the same, si same side on mine. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and attach it to the body. We're just going to go right close to the edge of that um, band that we put in there and just kind of push that in. And then we're going to go ahead and pull it back out. We're going to go ahead and trim up the top of it a little bit. Just we're going to glue all that closed on top of there. Just kind of fill it in. Just kind of squeeze it around that wire and bend it over. And then we're going to go ahead and get some, an X-Acto knife and cut it a little bit um, bigger so we can get the top part of the sleeve in there. Okay, and just cut it up just a little bit. And then go ahead and test fit it. Make sure it goes in there really good before you glue it in. And then go ahead and glue it in. Just kind of push it on in there. And then we're going to do the same thing for the second one. Just line it up, make sure it's the same si same um, height as the other one. And then let those dry. Just go ahead and lift the hat back or the head back and go ahead and put some glue inside of your ornament and then just glue it on down. And then we're just gonna take a 15 millimeter half bead and just stick it right up underneath that headband. Next, we're going to go ahead and make his arrow. I'm just taking a piece of round clay, the baking clay, and I flatten it out. And I'm just going to put it on one of these little sticks. And I'm going to put a little bit of the um, oven bake glue in here to hold the stick on. And then I'm just going to cut an arrow shape on this. So just go ahead and put it on there. Get it on there good. Wrap it around there. And then just go ahead and cut an arrow shape. And then bake it at 275 degrees for 15 minutes. Okay, next I'm going to take two feathers and I'm just going to tie some embroidery floss around them in red. And then I'm going to run the, the floss through that bead and we're going to glue that bead on. But make sure you go through the bead. And then just put a little bit of glue there and just push that on. And go ahead and grab your little spear and we're just going to wrap it around and tie a knot. And then wrap it around a few times and then tie a knot again. And then we're just going to um, glue that off. Okay, next I'm just going to add a little E6000 glue and a little hot glue. And I'm just going to put this spear right in his hand. This, this gnome really was pretty easy. I know that there looks like there's a lot of steps for him, but if you make him, I promise you, you'll love him. He turned out so cute. If you like these kind of videos, be sure and give me a thumbs up. And if you want to be notified when I have other videos, be sure and subscribe and hit that bell so you'll know, be notified when I have a new video upload. And if you want to stay tuned for my bloopers, they're coming up next. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hey guys, welcome back to my Monday channel where I create gnomes and characters. Characters, characters. Hey guys, welcome back to my Monday channel where I create gnomes and characters. Today, I am going to show you how to make a Indian gnome. Okay, get it together. Let's try again. If you want to know how to make him, stick around. i show you how. Thanks. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So glad you're here.
get it together. This can't be that hard. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. You said that already. I know. I said it five times. I'm on my take 13. Give me a break. <laughs> 